Hello Stitchy friends, how are we all? It's Rachel here from Moonlight Stitches and I'm going to talk about my moon gazing hair workshops. Um, uh, first off, I want to say that I do do both a, an online workshop and an in-person workshop. Again, moon gazer is very popular and my inspiration for Moon Gaze, it was the fabrics in this particular one because I had quite given to me quite a lot of dark fabrics and they're not really my thing. I don't usually go for dark fabrics but I thought what can I make with, um, with these fabrics? What can I make? So because I have a love of wildlife and I take a lot of my inspiration from the wildlife and the area around where I live. I live in D. H. Lawrence country in the, in Nottinghamshire, and directly across from me is a beautiful walk um, and fields. And I we have lots of hares in there in the morning that you'll see, and foxes in the evening. You'll we'll see them, you know. So I sort of I do love that. A hair fox kind of thing, I know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> so I was thinking, well, the dark fabric, it could be something to do with the evening and, the, you know, the, the gloominess of an evening, just that sort of twilighty kind of ethereal time of day. And I went to all these animals in my head and, and I thought, well, I'm going back to the hair and I'm moon gazing hair. And I actually would love a moon gazing hair statuette kind of thing in my garden but I haven't got one yet. Uh, I keep looking and they're either far too expensive or not quite what I want. So I thought I'll make my own but obviously can't go in the garden because she's made of fabric. So that was the inspiration. I know I'm waffling, I know. So I, as in all my sort of workshops and kits I tend to go on a slow stitch journey with you. So these aren't something that are going to be finished in my one day workshop. Uh, they are, you're encouraged to go away and be in a mindful stitching kind of process. That's where I sort of get you kick started if you like. So. I can hear you asking, what happens on an in-person workshop? <laughs> you're probably not, but anyway, I'm going to tell you. So you'll come along, you'll be with a, with other lovely, uh, like-minded stitchers. I encourage you to bring yourself some lunch, um, but I will be providing, or I do provide, lots of tea, coffee, drinks, um, and cakes and biscuits. A bit of mulled wine at Christmas if you come to a Christmas one. So, you know, it's we, I tend to try and keep it as uh, seasonal as possible. <laughs> so, and then you will be given a kit or provided with a kit to complete your um, piece. The only thing that I don't give you or don't provide is the stuffing because we don't get that far and also um, I always think stuffing is quite a personal thing. Some people like to use old scraps of fabric. Some people will go out and buy some new stuffing. I personally use old cushions that I'll find lovely cushion covers, cushions in, in uh, charity shops for like 50 pence. And I'll use the fabric uh, for something like this. And then I'll wash the inner, dry it and use that to stuff my little pieces so that's you know so everything sort of I'm trying to keep it as sustainable as possible but if again if you're international you'll be probably to ship you some it'd be kind of size it's easy for you to go and buy so that's the only thing I don't provide so anyway so what comes in your kit whether you're at a workshop or whether you're buying for an online uh, workshop you'll get the instructions and the pattern that comes as standard for whatever one you do you will get a fabric pack 
If you come to the workshops in person, I have a huge picnic hamper and that's full of little bags of coordinated fabric scraps, yo-yo uh, suffolk puffs, bits of lace, oh pardon me, bits of ribbon, all kinds of manner of things in here that I have foraged around for, been given, pre-loved, they've been a few pence from charity shops, that kind of thing. Um, you might get the odd bit that's new. Usually something that's new is something that somebody's given me from their stuff that they no longer need. Um, so that's what you'll get. But I have ladies and gents that spend quite a long time rummaging through getting the right colour. Because I do, I, I try to do different colours, palettes for different people. Because some people might, I mean, this is this was born of I had this dark fabric. Um, but you know you might want to do bright yellow I don't know it's it's your thing you do you as I as to coin the phrase so in along with that you'll get some threads um, various stranded cottons bits of metallic whatever I've got that I will um, sort of make up something that will go along that day uh, a DMC perle cotton I use DMC perle cotton size 12 to sew up everything um, because uh, I mean you can use um, machine thread but I like because you're doing it as a raw edge you'll see it and I just think it gives it a little bit of more depth than a cotton a, a machine cotton you'll be given some pins to pin it in with uh, some embellishments sequins beads all kinds of bits and bob buttons um, you get the eyes, you'll get the mechanics for the arms and legs, um, also a selection of needles. My go-to needles are chenille needles. I say this in nearly every single video that I do. And the reason for that is because they are very sharp and they have a bigger eye. And a couple of reasons for the bigger eyes. A, my eyesight is not so fabulous anymore. And B, they are bigger and you can get thicker threads through of all kinds of different uh, sort of thicknesses and mediums. So I like to use a chenille needle. You'll also get a bullion needle in there or a milliner's or straw needle, whatever you call it. And they're great for knots, uh, like bullion knots and French knots. Um, you'll also get a beading needle and the reason I pop a beading needle in is because not many people have heard of a beading needle um, and not many people do beading that come to my workshops, my slow stitch workshops, it, you know, so I always like to give them one, a, a needle because then they're not, we're not scrapping around looking for one for them because inevitably you'll get a little tiny seed bead and your needle will not go through it so it's better to just be given one in my opinion so that's what you're getting your basic kit so throughout the day I will guide you I'm going to say guide because I don't want to say teach because that's something um, I don't teach the stitchers because there's many books out there and there's also I have uh, little tiny tutorials in my uh, YouTube in the shorts so you'll be able to look at those but I'll guide you through the beginnings of how to make your patchwork how to start a few stitches off you might we might do some yo-yo some Suffolk puffs um, uh, I'll talk about pattern placement we'll cut out the pattern we'll start to stitch so don't be put off if you're a novice if you're a novice and you've never picked up a needle and thread, don't worry about it. Um, I had one lady who'd never sewn before, never even threaded a needle. And she's created every single one of my uh, creations now. And I like to think that these are like a sampler. I know if you've watched the other videos, you're going to go, oh no, here she goes again. She's going to talk about sampler. So... You know, the old fashioned samplers, the ABC or the welcome new baby or or, or you know, <laughs> anything sort of um, 
Do you remember the little old t tray cloths we used to do at school? I used to do them at school where you had to do the running stitch, cross stitch, all that kind of thing. That kind of sampler. But I do them in a 3D. So if you're new, you might just start with running stitch and do lots and lots and lots and lots of running stitch. But then you might um, develop your skills. And the beauty of this is you can hide bits that aren't quite right underneath his arms or you know if you want to do a new stitch and you think oh I don't know how to do that you can think right where is this going to be placed and place it on the inside of his leg or maybe sort of on his underneath or something like that it is but that requires quite a lot of forethought which I'm not very good at I'm usually the one that just you know goes with the flow and does whatever but again that it's entirely up to you but on this one I got quite into it and I was because there were toadstools there's been lots of toadstools I thought I'm going to do some toadstools that was an influence that I'd been walking and I'd sort of seen lots of toadstools I then went to my brother's and in his garden in front there was a lot of echinacea and I can't grow for the love of me any echinacea and I don't know why so that was my um, little influence for that. There's a little bee on there because when I sit stitching in my garden, um, the bees will be all over the lavender and there'll be hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds. Cow parsley, I know that's the brightest green. Uh, again, influenced by my walks. But I, like I say, I treat these like a sampler and I use my daily life to put into the stitch so it, it could be absolutely anything out you know it, it might be um, I've, ha I've found fish for tea or I've had fish for tea and I might do, do a little fish on it it's it just little things that depend on what I'm doing but as time goes on what I was trying to say is as time goes on and you're making your stitches and you're doing your stitches you're sort of developing your craft so it's organically growing with you so like I say if you if you're a newbie please don't be put off by the intricacy of my work um, not all my work is this detailed I have to say this one is particularly stitch heavy but that's because it was I wanted it that way so yeah um, so what happens after the workshop I don't sort of switch you off and say right you're done I've had your money bye I will then send you the video links and in the video links I show you how to carry on doing your um, creating your hair show you how to fit, put everything together how to construct it how to even stuff it how to sew things how to put the eyes in how to put the arms and legs on everything gets how to put the ears on you will get a video for absolutely everything and you can watch that whenever you want you can put me on pause have one lady who calls, calls me wait for me rage because <laughs> she has to get, she shouts at the television puts on pause and says wait for me rage and then she just stitches her a bit and then re redoes so yeah that's my wait for me rage i imagine her sort of shouting at the television wait hang on <laughs> so yeah so you get lifetime access to that and you get that whether you're in person or you sign up to the online one I hope that I, so, I really do hope that this is explaining the workshops and what you'll get from the day um, because I know a lot of people sometimes are a little bit like mm, I don't know whether I want to pay to go for a day but trust me when you get here and you get with other people chit chatting and talking about your stitches and getting encouragement it's such a lovely lovely day and I have ladies that I am firm friends with now that have been on came on my very very first workshop and and come to quite a lot and then we go out 
uh, we went to the Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show. We, we're planning on going on another little jaunt. We might go meet up and go to the charity shop and have a little forage around there. You know, so you will build lasting friendships. That's what I'm trying to say, isn't it? That's what I'm trying to say. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. Please be kind. I don't like the neg I don't like any negativity and they will be deleted, trust me. I'm not having negative I don't want negative vibes in my channel. So give me a thumbs up or or if you're new, subscribe and don't forget that little notification bell and you get to get to listen to me as soon as I pop up a video. <laughs> I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> me so I think I've said anything everything and I think I've sort of asked asked you uh, everything I've got this long list that I've made a list and uh, it's gone so hey ho so happy stitching everybody and I will see you all again soon okay okay bye bye